Today, I'm finally gonna get the solar from the workshop over to the house and get the house powered up. So I've got the conduit complete from the workshop to the house and I took your guys' advice. I removed some deck boards from the deck so that I could put in the conduit without actually having to crawl under this. So that worked really well. So we're using the Canadian Solar EP Cube for our solar power system. And basically we just gotta get our power from here over to the basement of our house and then we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and get this wire pulled and then we can finally see how much solar power we're actually making. So the first thing to do is get the string pulled into the conduit. So we're just gonna use a Walmart bag, a vacuum cleaner. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use that string to pull in a rope just so we have a little bit more pulling power. We're gonna take a short break and we're gonna wait for this rain to stop and then we'll be back at it. All right, just mar marking each one of my wires a different color so I know which one's which. All right, we got the wire completely pulled. It's in the solar power room and then it's down in our basement mechanical room. So now all I gotta do is basically get it wired up and I think we're good to go. So I did get everything wired up last night. So the power from the EP cube, it comes into here, it powers this critical loads panel. And then I ended up moving 13 circuits from our main panel and we moved that into here. So we've got 13 circuits here, four in the pole barn, total of 17 circuits that are critical loads. So I've got the system running in what they call self-consumption mode and it's zero export. So we're not, we're not sending any power to the power company. We can't sell back until we get an inspection. Okay, so self-consumption mode, the way that works is during the day, it will power our loads and it will charge the batteries. And then at night, you try to consume the batteries. You try to use the batteries up until they hit a certain state of charge. And right now I have that set at 30%. So at 30%, at that point in time, they would switch back to using the grid. So the idea is that you're using your, your own power, you try to use that as long as possible and then you're only buying from the power company for just maybe a few hours of the day. So last night I had that set up and I ran the critical loads last night and basically the way that worked is it got all the way down, it got down to 32%, it didn't actually hit 30. It didn't actually switch to the grid. So it ran all night on batteries on just the critical loads. And uh, this morning, what has happened is we've already made, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning, we've already made around 10 kilowatt hours of solar and it has charged the batteries back up and now the solar has dropped off because there's nowhere for it to go. It's not using the solar because we don't have enough loads and the batteries are already charged. So what I need is I need more loads to maximize our solar use. So what I have here is I've got where I can power the main panel from the EP cube. So we used to have a generator 
interlock right here where we used to hook up a generator. Well, now this interlock is going to be used for solar. So now I can turn off the main panel. I have to turn off the main panel to make this work. If you turn off the main panel and then turn on, then I'll be able to turn this breaker on and we'll power the entire house from the EP cube. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so that we can start really seeing how much solar we're actually making. Here it goes. All right. We are officially, couldn't he couldn't tell any change in here because the basement lights are on this panel. They're one of the critical loads. So um, the, front, the air conditioner, the dryer, the oven. Oh, the oven was going. I probably turned the oven off. We'll go check on it. Um, the oven, all of that stuff is in this panel, and now it's going to be powered from the EP cube. So if the EP cube doesn't make enough power, it will supplement with the grid. So it'll put out as much power as it can, and it'll let the grid use what you don't use. Like, um, so if it can't make enough power, the grid can supplement it so that you do have enough power. Basically, it's going to output as much power as it can so that you maximize your power savings. Turn the oven back on. So this is the way I plan on, on having my system powered up. It's going to have the critical loads panel power my main panel probably all the time. And the only reason I would ever turn that off is if we did have an extended power outage to make those batteries last uh, you know, through the night and be able to charge up the next day and kind of continually run the house, I can turn off that main panel with those big loads like the dryer and the oven and the air conditioner. I can turn that panel off and then we still have our 13 circuits that will get us through a normal day. And uh, it'll just basically make the batteries last longer. It gives me flexibility, right? So I can either power up the whole house or I can power up just 13 circuits. And that's basically just during a power outage. During the normal time when you're trying to maximize your solar usage, we're going to have everything powered up and just try to use as much sun as we can to lower our bill. So it's set up basically two ways. One, to maximize our power savings. And then two, it's set up to maximize how long we can go off grid in a power down situation. So now that I got everything wired here at the house, I'm gonna go ahead and put these deck boards down, get everything covered back up. So Rebecca, ended up giving the EP cube a pretty good test. She didn't even realize she was doing it. She was just going about her normal day, doing everything the normal way she does things, right? So she had, she had the oven going, she had the clothes dryer going, and the, the clothes washing machine going, and the air conditioner was out here running like normal. And then she ended up started the dishwasher, right? So she had all the appliances, all her big loads were all going at once. And of course, everything just it ran just fine. No, no issues whatsoever. Um, I uh, pulled the app up and I just wanted to check, see how things were going today. And I saw that really big spike on there. And 11 kilowatts is more power than what the EP cube actually creates. It creates 7.6, at least the single unit that I have does 7.6. So that extra power is just provided from the grid. It just passes through and uh, everything powers up just fine. Now, if the power was out right now, we wouldn't have that grid power, so we couldn't do all of these things all at the same time during a power outage. So that's something to kind of keep in mind, I guess, if the power does go out. But uh, Rebecca's just going about her normal day, didn't change her routine whatsoever, and she's running everything, and everything is running just fine. So I think, uh, I think that's a pretty good test. So we've been running the whole house now for three days on the EP cube. We've been pulling in uh, somewhere between 36 and 38 kilowatt hours worth of solar each day. And it's still limited because there's points in time where we, we, the batteries are full and we have nowhere to put it. So we would make more solar if we could sell it back to the power company. So today I'm finally going to get everything all labeled up and get it ready for inspection. 
So I ended up buying a package of 85 labels, uh, way more than I probably need, but any label you might need to label your, your solar power system is here. So I don't think I'm gonna use all of these labels. Um, you know, I think, I think I'll probably use maybe a third of these labels, but there is a ton of labels here that you need to label your system. And then on the internet, you can download these guides to be able to tell you where to put each one of these labels in your system. So it'll tell you basically what to put on the conduit, what to put on your DC junction boxes, your DC disconnect, what to put on your inverter, uh, where you're on your meter, utility meter, you know, it basically tells you where you put all your labels. So I downloaded two different guides on how to label up the, the equipment. I'm gonna follow those as best I can. If there's any question on whether it needs a label or not, I'm just gonna err on the side of over labeling instead of under labeling. So I think too much information is better than not enough. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, I think I've got everything labeled. So I've got labels on the outside. If you take the covers off, there's labels on the inside as well in both of these panels. I've got my disconnects, my breaker panels labeled. I've got my solar circuit. My DC circuit is labeled all the way in here and all the way back out to the roof. So I do have a few of the labels left over. A lot of these don't really pertain to my system. Like I don't have DC combiner boxes. I don't have AC junction boxes because I don't have micro inverters. So the design of my system kind of determines what labels I put on and I don't need necessarily all of these. So I think I'm finally ready to have the power company come and inspect our solar power system. Hopefully it will get approved and we can start selling back our extra power because right now, the, the power from the solar panels has already dropped off because the batteries are almost fully charged. When they get to like 90%, it starts to slow down that charge rate. And it's already, and I'm not using any power in the house, so it's not using the solar. You can tell 11 a.m. this morning, the solar dropped off. It's completely sunny. It's there, it's just not being used because there's nowhere for it to go. So if I get this approved, at least we can push that solar power, turn it to AC, sell it back to the power company, and at least get something out of it. Because so far, every day I've ran this, you get to a certain point in the day and the solar drops off because there's nowhere for it to go. The batteries are charged. We're not using enough power to be able to maximize the solar. So if we can at least sell it back and get a little bit of something out of it, it's not net metering. They're only gonna buy it off of us for like wholesale price, but if we have it, we might as well sell it instead of it not being used at all. So hopefully we can get this proved and uh, get this turned on. And then we can do another video and I can finally cover the cost of, you know, you know what the, the cost of the installation would be and compared to, you know, savings on your power and selling back to the power company and basically how long it would take to, to make your money back. You know, so we can do a video on that later, but uh, I think I'm ready for inspection. And uh, so far we've had three full days and a couple half days, you know, running on the system and everything's working good. So I think that's it for this video guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.